bottom 20% is, uh, is uh, some work that we've been doing within uh, DARIA, the Digital Research Infrastructure for the Arts and Humanities, uh, in the context of one particular working group called the Digital Practices and Methods Observatory Working Group. What we've been trying to do is to uh, understand how uh, digital humanists and people who use digital resources and digital tools and digital methods uh, uh, what kind of needs, what kind of practices they engage with, what kind of use they make of uh, the resources, what kind of uh, methods they use, uh, and a number of questions like that. So we've got four projects within the uh, working group. And what I'm going to concentrate today is one part of uh, uh, the survey on scholarly practice and digital needs in the human sciences that we conducted for the first time in 2015, and we'll analyze one particular sort of part of, this, uh, of the, of the uh, data of this uh, uh, survey. Uh, the general uh, questions that we have in the survey is what are, how people use scholarly data and collections, uh, including digital, you know, sort of scholars and also students. Uh, also, how they engage with scholarly practices in information seeking, organizing, studying, and annotating, sharing, and publishing uh, work related to research, and what kinds of digital uh, use and needs they engage uh, with. Uh, what tools of services they use, what kind of infrastructure, standards, devices and environments and perceptions and some basic perceptions and norms that they have. And the reason why we do this research is because uh, uh, we want to be able to cover not just information seeking as earlier studies, but also to focus very much on how we can learn useful things in order then to adjust and attune digital infrastructures uh, to the needs that we understand come from the community. Uh, the uh, purpose is comparability. This is a project in which uh, many people participate. It's uh, a working group of uh, more than uh, 15 active members from uh, different countries uh, who co-authored a uh, quite large uh, report, which is still at the final stages of editing now, with several chapters on individual national profiles, a consolidated analysis of the results, and also a comparative analysis. Uh, and the focus is to do this every year, every few years, every five years. We decided the next round is going to be 2020 in order then to develop a longitudinal view of uh, what happens in the disciplines. So uh, we have already published a highlights report uh, that is uh, available uh, online in several languages, in six languages, and the other, the large uh, long report is under preparation. 2,177 respondents across Europe, 10 languages, six national profiles in the report, and Archaeologists. 170 70 people identified themselves as archaeologists in their sort of primary uh, disciplinary affiliation uh, uh, in this study. And uh, they come from different professional line, ranks and levels of research experience. Uh, and what we did is, uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to present now descriptive statistics regarding uh, the information, digital practice, needs, and attitudes of this particular cohort, of these 177 um, archaeologists. Also, I'm going to say certain things about uh, comparing archaeologists and non-archaeologists. So I'm comparing the 177 with all the rest of uh, uh, the uh, respondents who are n identify themselves in other disciplines within uh, the human sciences. Mm -hmm. But I'm only presenting in that statistically significant results, those that uh, 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 succeed the test of uh, rejecting the null hypothesis of no relationship uh, at the 0, uh, zero 0.5 level, 5% uh, level, practically meaning that there is, well, only 5% of, uh, of possibility that what we find as a pattern <coughs> that differentiates archaeologists from others is due to chance. And I'm doing this using asymmetrical uh, measures of uh, association. I'm looking at how archaeology or non-archaeology, being an archaeologist or non not being an archaeologist, uh, can affect uh, the questions, uh, the different other uh, <coughs> questions that I'm reporting using these statistical measures, Goodman and Kruskal Tau, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, for nominal variables, and Sommers D, which is for ordinal uh, variables. So the first question was really uh, how people use different types of digital and analog resources. And we sort of structured this question to say, are you using this kind of resource on a desktop or laptop PC, uh, on some mobile device, tablet or smartphone, or in a print form or using an analog device? And what we find uh, is uh, these are the results for, for the archaeologists in this case. As you can see, 
uh, the largest number of uh, uh, type of resource in which most people said that they use it in uh, digital uh, form or desktop or laptop PC is images. You can see that 167 out of 177 people said that. Then 161, two people, uh, 61 people said that they use articles in scholarly journals on a, uh, on a PC or a laptop. 154 use maps, 138 uh, videos, 125 audio. We were surprised to find so many archaeologists uh, that say that they use audio and video as a resource, uh, actually. And it may be a change in the, in the patterns of the discipline using, you know, sort of the new approaches to uh, interpretation of the travel sage, people sharing notes and other stuff. We, we don't have an explanation for this. This is something, actually, in which uh, I have a personal research project. This work that I'm reporting is together with my colleagues on the Digital Curation Unit in Efeli Hadzidiaku and Ayat. Benardu, my personal project called e curators is based on multiple case studies in which I will try to investigate uh, more sort of cohesively the whole sort of gestalt of uh, you know what is happening in specific archaeological projects, how we can understand some of these uh, uh, trends. What we see uh, on the other si uh, hand is that uh, uh, there is use of archival holdings, but in this case, I mean it's equivalent the use in archival holdings in digital uh, form through a PC or through. Uh, in, uh, in actual sort of physical uh, analog uh, forms. It's 11, uh, 113, 111 is it's the same. I mean, this is actually the same number uh, of people uh, taking statistical, uh, you know, sort of um, confidence margins into, uh, into account. Uh, books, predictably, is uh, the one source that people still consult much more on <coughs> printed form than uh, on a digital form. However, more than half of our respondents uh, said that they use, they read books uh, uh, also on a PC, uh, which may be significant. What uh, we added, uh, the third category that we added here, which is uh, um, if people use something on a mobile device, tablet or smartphone, is uh, for us interesting just because we have this hunch that uh, things are changing a lot now uh, with all these uh, pervasive, ubiquitous technologies that are being sort of introduced anywhere from the field work to uh, really the dissemination, etc. And we see this as a, a trend that uh, we imagine, we imagine with surveys uh, that uh, speculate rather than it's going to increase uh, uh, in the next time we do this uh, survey. But still now you get uh, something like 40 people uh, using uh, smartphones or tablets in order to access images, uh, 31 to access maps, 39 uh, 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 to access video or audio, which is uh, uh, actually something that is uh, worth uh, thinking about. So we did this comparison then, and we found that there is a statistically significant uh, uh, difference uh, in uh, how archaeologists and others consult certain kinds of materials and certain kinds of devices. For instance, and this is surprising, we found that archaeologists tend to consult articles more often than others in printed form. You see the number is small here because there's fewer archaeologists in the survey, it's only 177 and about 2,000 of the others. But still, proportionally speaking, uh, archaeologists consult more than others' uh, 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 articles in printed form. We found this surprising. We don't know how much of this is really sort of uh, uh, to be uh, taken at face value at this time, but it's certainly something that we'd like to investigate. Uh, on the contrary, what we found is that archaeologists consult books less often than others on a smartphone or tablet. Uh, there are other disciplines in the digital humanities that uh, are represented in the survey and uh, uh, they use that more. Uh, archaeologists consult archival holdings more often than others in analog form. This we find also surprising. There are several questions, as you will see uh, later on, that point to uh, an important uh, place of materiality for archaeologists that uh, can only be explained by you know, how the profession uh, understands uh, uh, primacy and uh, the difference between primacy and secondariness in, uh, in these sources. We can't have any other explanation for that. You will see some other questions that I will return uh, with a comment on those as well. Uh, archaeologists consult maps and images less often than others on a smartphone or a tablet. While they do, and you saw that was something like 30 uh, out of 170, which is not a small percentage, it's more than, you know, sort of uh, uh, 20, more than 20 percent. However, other disciplines use uh, uh, more uh, tablets than archaeologists for that purpose. Archaeologists digital uh, technologies and tools more often than others in order to process, analyze, and visualize. There was a number of questions that we asked, you know, uh, following the research um, uh, life cycle, and we said, okay, how do you use, uh, uh, how, you know, much do you use uh, digital methods, tools, anything, in order to sort of uh, conduct fieldwork, to collect uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, data or to analyze or to organize or to disseminate, etc. And more or less, archaeologists are the same in all these other questions. The only question in which they differentiated and the small archaeologists uh, answer, answer positively to this is processing, analyzing, visualizing. And uh, this is no accident, of course. I mean, it relates very, very much to the central role of visualization in uh, archaeological research as also uh, analysis that uh, now takes the form of uh, uh, digital, uh, digitally enabled analysis, in a sense. Uh, well, the use of uh, uh, various kinds of tools in order to manage uh, 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 data in archaeology and resources, we call this literally data, uh, specifically research resources, we have this sort of more general term. And what we find here is that the research assets. And uh, in this case, what we found is more archaeologists, uh, uh, comparatively speaking, uh, use databases uh, and more archaeologists use spreadsheets compared to other uh, people in the digital uh, humanities. And uh, we find this is uh, a sign of the maturity of the discipline, in a sense, in using the tools, but also a sign of the way in which some of the research in archaeology uh, works as uh, very, very much serial, series-based research uh, or uh, research that is based on vectors of uh, information or geographical information as well that also feeds into, into this uh, extended use of databases. Uh, what you see here, and I think this is something to uh, consider, is that uh, um, uh, spreadsheets such as Excel are almost double uh, in terms of uh, uh, popularity uh, than databases. And this is, again, something that uh, is confirmed by a number of uh, other sort of qualitative and quantitative investigations that uh, uh, spreadsheets are there for good and they're not disappearing anywhere any day soon. Uh, from archaeology. Archaeologists are differentiated in the kind of databases that they use from others, uh, while, yeah, clearly there is uh, a number of archaeologists that use a personal database, about 40, 50. So about half of the uh, respondents use uh, a personal uh, a database, either a personal or an institutional database. Archaeologists <coughs> tend, more, tend more often than other humanists uh, to use, uh, uh, and social scientists, human scientists, to use personal databases for their research. And this is also, it's interesting, uh, because it sort of uh, uh, indicates a level of uh, um, particularity and uh, uh, ideographic approach to research that is uh, peculiar to archaeology and that is troubles uh, everyone who's uh, working uh, in the area, for instance, of uh, digital aggregation, digital uh, uh, preservation of archaeological uh, material. Uh, archaeologists also use <coughs> databases <coughs> storing images, maps, or 3D models more often than others. Nothing to comment, really. It's pretty obvious why and how. Uh, what we found, and uh, this was a surprising result in a sense, is that archaeologists do not fare well with uh, um, the whole sort of world of social media or the whole world of web technologies, despite the existence of uh, projects such as Open Context, for instance, and despite the you know all the sort of hype about so many archaeological projects having their own websites uh, online, etc. What we found is that compared to other disciplines, archaeologists use less. Uh, web content management systems and use less uh, social media in order to store and manage research assets. Uh, this was a question about using research assets. But then we asked other questions as well that went into uh, attitudes and we asked even more questions regarding strategies of dissemination. I'm going to turn in the last five minutes of my talk uh, to those. Here what we see is a slightly complex graph. It's a cumulative uh, uh, graph. Uh, what we see is percentages on the side. And the question was, I visit historical archives, special collections, or museums. We ask people to respond to that question saying, and I use it very often, often, uh, seldom, or never. And what we see is the lowest band, this band here, is the very often. What I want you to look at is the very, very often or often. So that is the mark, for instance, for I visit historical archives, special collections, and museums, is that more than 60%, about 65% of the people say that they do. Uh, visit, and I'm going to sort of offer a comment about comparing with uh, other humanists on this uh, uh, in a moment. Uh, if you look at what is higher, what is this level, the highest is I collaborate with others at the research project. This is surprisingly high, 70%, uh, more than 70% of archaeologists say that they have collaborative work. Is it surprising, you'd say? Excavation, field work, very often is collaborative uh, by necessity. And that indicates some differences that we have in the form of uh, institutional practices that, and uh, disciplinary practices that we have in archaeology with other disciplines like uh, cultural studies, literature, etc., where research is very solitary uh, in many ways. 
Uh, I use my own keyword, keyword list of thesaurus to organize my research assets. That attracts more than 60%, 62% or something like that. But uh, for uh, people who say use it often or very often. However, uh, the people who answered the same question of how often or very often uh, they use uh, standard keywords list of thesauri, knowledge organization systems, are only between uh, 35%. It's almost half. And this is also indicative of uh, uh, the resistance to standardization that exists within, within the profession. Uh, I access primary sources outside my country of uh, residence. This is, again, high, and it indicates still the role of uh, post-colonial archaeology, world archaeology. Uh, I don't mean that uh, all of us or all of you who's working in the I work internationally are post-colonial or colonial in any sense, but it's really part of a tradition in which archaeological teams of one country would work in other countries. And sometimes then that means that you, have, you need up to access materials uh, uh, from other countries uh, very clearly. So just a couple of observations on, uh, now on comparisons here between archaeologists and non-archaeologists. Archaeologists visit more often than others archives, collections, and museums, clearly. Uh, archaeologists access primary sources outside the country more often than others. Again, I just gave an explanation for that. They use search engines or research publications, however, less often than others. This is puzzling. They don't use, uh, we sort of we cited, we quoted Google Scholar, Microsoft Academic Search, names like that, right? Uh, Scopus, what have you. And people said less archaeologists than others, uh, comparatively speaking, said that they use those uh, uh, for their uh, research. Uh, archaeologists disseminate also their work less often, less often than others through their site or blog. This we found, as I say, surprising because the hype is that there is a lot of activity in that area uh, within archaeology and it's something that we'd like to look into in more detail. And finally, they disseminate, uh, however, they disseminate their work more often than others through a community site, a site such as academia.edu, for instance, or ResearchGate. Uh, uh, they disseminate, however, their work less often than others through a content community. Flickr, the YouTube, those communities with uh, uh, SlideShare, etc. And less often than others through a social networking site. More in general, there's many, many questions in which people said that they're sort of less uh, uh, eager to sort of uh, uh, work with those. And if you look at the numbers, it's very minimal. There's three or four people out of uh, uh, 177 who said that they do use often or very often these things. So the final question uh, that we ask is uh, if they, uh, what people, co if they consider tech support for tools or infrastructures uh, important, and we ask people to rate in several questions in a scale from one to ten, uh, rating the importance of that. And interestingly, archaeologists uh, 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 said that they consider tech support more important uh, in comparison with uh, other people. So what we saw in this uh, research is we got a snapshot, which is uh, more about a, uh, more or less a snapshot of the what in uh, research, and what we hope is that through qualitative research we're going to be able to supplement this with uh, responding to questions of how and why, and also that we're going to be able to trace the continuation of these uh, patterns uh, in the profession uh, from time to time uh, after we sort of conduct the second round of this survey in 2020. Thank you.